नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध so today we'll be taking a sutta from angutra nikaya which is uh, i think book of 7 this 71 development so let us see because when a bhikkhu is not intent on development even sorry uh, because when a bhikkhu is not intent on development even though he forms the which may my mind be liberated from the taints by non clinging yet his mind is not liberated from the taints by non clinging for what reason because he lacks development so uh, right away the buddha is starting saying that what you wish for you don't get but what you do actually uh, in your life or in your practice that is what you get so wishing for something is not kind of uh, guaranteeing what that you get something but what is the actions which you are taking that actions will lead to what you get for what reason because he lacks development lacks development of what of the four establishments of mindfulness the four right strivings the four bases of psychic potency the five spiritual faculties the five powers the seven factors of awakening or enlightenment and the noble eightfold path so uh, this is the requisites of uh, awakening which the buddha has uh, informed us about so these are the things which he has to develop suppose the, the, uh, there was an hen with 8 10 or 12 eggs that she had not properly covered incubated nurtured even though she might wish she might form the wish may many chicks pierce their shells with the point of their claws or break and hatch safely yet the chicks are incapable of doing, doing so for what reason because the hen has not properly covered incubated and nurtured her eggs so in the same way uh we may have a wish uh, to develop in the practice we may have a wish to kind of grow in the practice but if we have not uh, sufficiently uh, done what was required when we are required to six hour we have not done a six hour when we were required to smile we don't smile when we are uh, uh, tell to let go of something we have not let go of that thing those things will hinder us in the progress because it is like the hen not properly incubating the eggs so to when a bhikkhu is not intent on development even though he forms the wish may my mind be liberated from the taints by non clinging yet his mind is not liberated from the taints by non clinging for what reason because he lacks development lacks development of what of the four uh, establishment of mindfulness till the noble eightfold path because when a bhikkhu is intent on development even though he does not form the wish may my mind be liberated from the taints by non clinging yet his mind is liberated from the taints by non clinging for what reason because of his development development of what of the four establishment of mindfulness the four right strivings the four bases of psychic potency the five spiritual faculties the five powers the seven factors of awakening and the eight noble eight pole path so in this way uh, the buddha is saying that when you are doing your work if you are uh, even not wishing to uh, uh, progress even if you are not wishing to go into a jhana even if you are not having any kind of a desire because you are doing the practice correctly when your mind is distracted you recognize you release you relax re smile and return to your object of meditation if you are doing that even if you are not wishing that you will progress you will progress because you are following the practice and that is how uh, this uh, practice is benefiting those who 
are following the instructions. If they are not following the instructions, then the, the, the process is not complete and then there is a uh, lack of uh, progress. Suppose there was a hen with eight, 10 or 12 eggs that she had properly covered, incubated, nurtured, even though she might not form the wish. May my chicks pierce their shells with the points of their claws or break beaks and hatch safely, yet the chicks are incapable of doing so. For what reason? Because because the hen had properly covered, incubated and nurtured her eggs. So in this way, uh, when uh, the hen uh, covers the egg, uh, incubates it and uh, sits on the egg when it is required, even if there is no thought which comes up in the mind of the hen, still uh, the uh, eggs will hatch because the right causes and conditions have been given for the egg to hatch. So what we have to uh, do is give the right and causes and conditions to develop our practice and not have a kind of, uh, even if uh, we do, uh, we think that if we did, did not have a kind of a strong desire for something, we will not get it. But Buddha is coming from the another uh, perspective. He's coming from the perspective that if you do the right things which are needed for a certain development to happen, then that uh, result will take care of itself. So that is the kind of uh, advice the Buddha is giving. So to when a bhikkhu is intent on development, even though he does not form a wish, may my mind be liberated from the taints by non-clinging. Yet his mind is liberated from the taints by non-clinging. For what reason? Because of his development. Development of what? Of the four establishment of mindfulness till the noble eightfold path. When Bhikkhus, a carpenter or a carpenter's apprentice, sees the impressions of his fingers and his thumb on the handle of the adzel, he does not know, I have worn away so much of the adzel handle today, so much yesterday, so much earlier. So I think... Uh, 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 we call it in uh, Hindi, Randha, we call it. There is a kind of a uh, tool uh, which is used to uh, smoothen the wood. So they uh, use it with the hand, two hands, and they push it against the uh, rough wood and they will uh, kind of chip away the wood to make it smooth. So this uh, device, when uh, the carpenter is using, he is putting a lot of pressure on that wood. And in a certain amount of time, what would happen is that there would be impressions of his thumb on the, uh, on the uh, equipment which he is using. Now there is uh, other equipments also uh, which are used like ax. So I uh, mostly give the uh, example of the ax. When you're using an ax every day, uh, the, the, uh, whoever is using the ax, his impressions are there on the handle. So that uh, handle, uh, the impression when it uh, forms, uh, he will one day kind of realize that I have this impressions on this handle. But he will not uh, kind of uh, be able to say that this much impression had happened over this much time and this day, this much impression had happened. So it is very difficult for somebody to gauge from one sitting how much he has gained from that one particular meditation sitting. So it is kind of pointing out that each session of meditation, when you are sitting, there is a, a amount of benefit you are getting, but you will not be able to quantify that amount of benefit you get from each meditation sit which you do each day. So in that way, if you are having a practice of doing a meditation every morning, it is adding to your impression on your mind. And as you grow, that impression has a benefit of change in behavior. So one day somebody may uh, say that uh, you were uh, kind of an angry person, but I see that you are not being so angry anymore. 
or somebody may say that uh, you were uh, not helping uh, others, but now you have become uh, helpful. Something like that, uh, somebody may say, and you may realize that I don't realize when this change has happened, but I have changed for the better. So that is the way, while do, if you do the practice every day, that impression, uh, which comes in a similar manner on a hammer or a ax or, a, uh, or this uh, equipment, which is used for the wood, you will get that benefit of a development and you will realize one day that your daily practice is kind of giving you a change in a behavior, change in perspective, change in how you are relating to things, change in how you are relating to your thoughts, changing how uh, soon uh, you get uh, out of your bad moods. Those kind of things when uh, you are doing your meditation constantly, daily, that would help you. <coughs> so to, when a bhikkhu is intent on development, though he does not form the wish, may my mind be liberated from the taints by non-clinging, yet his mind is liberated from the taints by non-clinging. For what reason? Because of his development. Development of what? Of the four establishments of mindfulness. Still, the noble eightfold path. When because a carpenter, okay, we have gone through that. But when it, it has worn away, he knows that it has worn away. So to when a bhikkhu is intent on development, even though he, he does not know, I have worn away so much of the taints today, so much yesterday, so much earlier. So I'll, re, I'll uh, repeat this uh, phrase. Even though he does not know, I have worn away so much of the things today, so much yesterday, so much earlier. Yet when they are worn away, he knows that they are worn away. Suppose because there was a seafaring ship bound together by lashings that have been worn away in the water for six months. It could be hauled up on dry land during the cold season and its lashings could be further attacked by wind and sun. Inundated by rain from a rain cloud, the lashings would readily deteriorate and rot away. So too, when a bhikkhu is intent on development, his fetters rapidly collapse and rot away. Over here, the Buddha is giving another kind of visual uh, image of how uh, the fetters means that there are links to a chain. So you are fettered by something. So you are uh, linked to whatever uh, you think is yours, the thoughts, uh, the cravings, uh, the wanting of something. So while you are doing your practice, when you are doing six hours every day uh, on that same amount of uh, craving which arises, then what would happen is slowly, slowly you will take away the energy from that craving and you will put that energy in your wholesome mind states. So one day, slowly, slowly, it will uh, get worn out like a rope, which is a strong rope, which is uh, there to kind of keep the ship, uh, ship uh, 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 anchored to the, sh uh, to the uh, shore. But over the time, with the rain coming in, with the, sea, uh, sea, uh, the, uh, the uh, sun uh, shining on it, and the sea water, all those things, it becomes weak and it uh, it kind of breaks away on its own. So in the same way, when you are doing your practice, when you are doing six hours uh, on, uh, on your current uh, uh, hindrances which are arising, when you are recognizing that they are impersonal, when you are recognizing each time that they are impermanent, and you are recognizing how you are creating your own Dukkha. By doing that every day and uh, on a consistent basis, it will have an effect of uh, you, your hindrance is becoming weaker and one day being totally worn away. So as we know that in Sotapanna, there are three things uh, which are there. There are three fetters which are there, which we give up. One of the fetters are the fetter of uh, having doubt that is, is this the practice which will take us to uh, awakening or Nibbana. Then there, there is another fetter of uh, thinking that uh, uh, doing rituals and practices will take you to Nibbana. 
so that fetter is uh, broken away because we know that by doing rituals by by doing a fire ceremony or uh, going into a river and washing ourselves will not uh, result in our becoming awakened we are kind of sure of that then we are also sure of the uh, impersonal nature with which uh, uh, many things are kind of uh, get us attached so it does not kind of uh, take away your personal uh, personality view totally but you get insight into the in impersonal perspective so these three fetters when uh, they are uh, uh, done then you are a, uh, you are a sotapanna then when you are a sakdagami then there are two fetters which are again uh, weakened they are not uh, uh, totally gone but they are weakened one is the fetter of hate and one other is the fetter of lust that is anything which you uh, like i like uh, uh, something or i dislike something those uh, two fetters are uh, weakened in sakdagami and when you are become a anagami those two fetters are totally destroyed so then you are, you have only five fetters which are uh, uh, minor in nature uh, so they are something like uh, wanting to be reborn in a deva loka wanting to be reborn in a, uh, a human uh, realm or a physical realm and then uh, there is a desire to be uh, like there, there is a asmi mana which is called a personality view or the a faint uh, shadow of an ego faint shadow of an ego is uh, still there then there there is uh, restlessness is there so uh, those uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, like hindrances ignorance is there so you have those hindrances or uh, the fetters are still there and as you practice those fetters also become weaker and uh, then uh, this uh, you may be reborn in a deva loka and there you can uh, attain <coughs> arahantship or in, in this lifetime itself you may be able to attain arahantsi now it's interesting that there is many suttas uh, where the buddha mentions that when you will be uh, a arahant if you are in uh, anagami it can be just before your death you may become an arahant and uh, and the consciousness does not travel anywhere as you are dying the, as the process of dying takes place you give up uh, your uh, attachments and you will uh, not have your uh, consciousness leave the body that uh, there itself you are uh, attaining the arahant uh, ship then uh, it may happen that your consciousness may leave the body but it has not reached the uh, brahma loka and between that uh, sphere uh, your consciousness can uh, uh, let go and you will never be uh, landing on the brahma loka then uh, you it can be that when you land on the brahma loka you may uh, uh, give up your uh, attachments and that time you may attain the arahantship or it may be a short time you stay in the uh, brahma loka and you attain arahanthood or you can stay a long time in the brahma loka and attain arahant so uh, uh, the uh, the attachments how much you have or the amount of uh, uh, the clinging which you have would determine when you would uh, kind of attain uh, arahanthood so over here also it is giving a simile of the rope where the rope gets kind of progressively weaker and then the rope is de destroyed in the same way if you continue to do the practice one day you will definitely uh, 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 see progress and you will see that you have a change in perspective thus uh, have i uh, so so do the uh, then a big quiz intent on development is better readily collapse and rot away so okay this is the end of the sutta so i did not realize that so uh, they uh, the buddha gives us three similes in this sutta to uh, uh, kind of underline that we as a uh, individual have to do the practice in a manner which is effective and which is giving us results if you are doing a practice which is not giving us a result that means that the process which you are following has something to be changed so that uh, you are getting a perspective of how you progress in your practice uh, and if you 
are progressing in our practice, it means that you are doing the things rightly. If you are not progressing in the practice, then you have to look back and recheck uh, the process of the practice. If one does a practice, he will get the results. If one does not do the practice, then the results is suspect. So now uh, those sim similes are very clear, like the simile of the hen, where the hen is uh, sitting on the eggs it, uh, and it is sitting uh, properly. Then the uh, chicks will hatch. If uh, a, uh, a person is using a tool uh, every day, then the tool will develop uh, the impressions of his hand. If uh, a person is uh, putting a boat in the uh, sea with a rope, then that rope will fade away as uh, time goes by. So all those things are a surety. There, this also underlines the cause and effect nature of the teaching also. Well, uh, while explaining uh, dependent origination, the Buddha says that if this is there, that comes to be. If this arises, that arises. If this is not there, that does not uh, that, that is not there. If this are, does, uh, does not arise, that does not arise. So that, that means that it is a uh, process of cause and effect, which affects all our life, all our activities, everything physical. Uh, currently, uh, if you ask a scientist, he will say that, yes, everything physical is linked to a cause and effect uh, process. And there is no uh, escape from that process. Everything has a cause and effect, and it will be by that cause and effect a, a process. If you do an action, there will be a reaction. So in the same way, our action of doing 6R has a reaction. The reaction is that we take away the energy from the hindrance and our putting us our uh, attention on the wholesome aspect, our uh, sending of metta or sending of karuna or mudita or upekha, those uh, aspect of uh, wholesomeness will grow as we put attention on it. Because attention is also related to the energy which we are giving to what we are want to happen. So we are giving our energy to the wholesome and by the same process, even if we do not want it, it still we will progress in our practice. So this is the uh, uh, sharing for, from my end. And I would like to invite uh, people to uh, ask questions so we can uh, kind of uh, know that you have all kind of uh, understood it. And if there is any kind of doubts or if there are any kind of uh, uh, clarifications which are required, then uh, I can uh, kind of clarify. Yes, <laughs> you. Um, yes, uh, nice, nice choice of uh, Sutta Bhante. Thank you. Um, my understanding from what you were reading and explaining is yeah. that we need to be very careful about our intention and not to have an intention which is uh, determining a, an outcome but an intention which is about our intention around the, the, the practice, the process, rather than the result. Got it. So what would be a wholesome declaration of intention then? If you were to, at the start of a practice, what might you say that was, uh, kept this imbalance in the mind? So, so one, I'm sitting... One thing which Bhante says um, many times is, that when you are sitting, you say that I will uh, just watch what is happening and I'll accept whatever comes in this sitting. So there is one, one way of kind of detaching us from the result is mm -hmm. that, uh, that we are not sitting here for a result, but we are sitting here to do what was our task to do is was to uh, kind of be on the object of meditation. If our mind is uh, not on the object of meditation, we kind of recognize it release it, relax, re-smile and return. So our job is not to kind of uh, dictate what happens, but mm -hmm. our job is to know that we will do the six R because when uh, we are uh, not, when you say recognize that you are uh, remembering something in the office 
okay something happened in the office and you recognize that that is happening but you do not uh, release your attention and just start thinking about what what should i do after the session should i go and ask uh, uh, call should i ask bante for the mobile phone and like in the retreat setting or if you are there should i uh, uh, means end the session now and call and get this clarified all those thoughts and things which you are doing that time you are not doing the meditation Mm -hmm. the only time you are not doing your meditation is when you recognize and you don't release so uh, your intention is just to uh, six r and uh, uh, be with your object of meditation whatever happens uh, mm -hmm. your intention should be whatever happens in this session i will just be a witness and i will not uh, kind of uh, uh, expect anything whatever happens i will accept so sometimes your mind is busy sometimes your mind is calm and it should be done and uh, especially if your mind is getting calm uh, in your sessions and you have a kind of a, a good feeling that okay this session uh, may be kind of a continuation of that but it can be a 180 degree difference when you sit and it may be kind of a very busy mind which you kind of meet so you are uh, kind of uh, understanding that this is an impersonal process the the thoughts which are coming up are not coming up uh, by your own volition the thoughts are coming up you are recognizing those thoughts so that is uh, uh, you are uh, you get an insight into your impersonal nature and that is the intention you should keep thank you bandit thank you is there anything else any other question related to practice or this sutta shubham uh, no one actually no no I was not okay i'm outside actually okay no problem yeah okay no problem any other questions so we could have this uh, short session uh, sister kema is returning to india there is a news i, I wanted to share uh bante kind of is uh i i cannot say that uh, he is uh, out of the woods but uh, still uh, we are trying trying to give uh, as best as care which we can possibly give to him considering the circumstances and uh, we uh, will continue to kind of share with you as and when possible uh bante may kind of give a recorded uh, teachings uh when possible uh, we can uh, means david can take a camera and uh, record his teachings uh, uh, and then share it with us so for now i think he will kind of uh, be uh, resting more and uh, the retreats will not be there uh, delson is going back to dhammasukha and uh, he may kind of uh, do certain retreats and uh, david may take up Uh, those retreats which are coming up uh, most of those retreats are full so we don't want to kind of disappoint those people who have kind of booked the retreats and uh, we would like to kind of uh, continue uh, our uh, training and teaching uh, which is the same uh, which is uh, as per the what we have been taught by uh, uh, bante we are kind of giving those trainings and tomorrow i'll uh, go and uh, meet uh, delson and there are certain amount a uh, uh, few of our trustees also will come and we'll kind of discuss about what we do over here in india also he is uh, planning to come uh, in september october november so in those months uh, there may be three retreats or four retreats based on uh, the registrations and how it goes so this uh, registration uh, after a long time will be opening it up for the international community so anybody uh, who wants to come can come so this uh, retreats which we had uh, in jethwan was uh, kind of good uh, and uh, we would like to kind of continue teaching but uh, we did not uh, purposefully uh, kind of give that uh, announcement at dhammasuka.org uh, because we uh, were really not sure how we can handle uh, kind of international participants but at uh, the location in beer uh, that uh, in himachal uh that is a good location and there uh, i think uh, they will be able to uh, kind of uh, handle international uh, arrivals 
and uh, jth one is kind of upgrading into a, a better center so uh, they are uh, have brand new center is becoming uh, constructed it is a kind of a partnership between the trust over there in jth one and the government the government is encouraging uh, meditation uh, as part of their mental health uh, initiative and to promote uh, a kind of uh, uh, peace and uh, stability of uh, means uh, as an individual so uh, the uh, the government over here has been doing this uh, and encouraging the meditation for uh, some time and they have given a, a portion of the money for uh, building this center and this center has turned out to be quite well there may be a lot of things uh, still uh, after the center has been inaugurated which has to be done but uh, in time i am sure they they will be able to do but it will be much better than the current setup so if uh, somebody has come over there then uh, uh, they will get a better kind of understanding of uh, how uh, those rooms are there and uh, the dhamma hall and all those things so let us see let us hope uh, we uh, we have a better uh, year this year and uh, we all wish uh, well for bante and uh, continue to send metta share merit with bante and uh, hopefully he will be kind of uh, recovering and uh, we will uh, continue to teach uh, sister kema will return on 22 uh, so uh, this sunday also i am not sure she will be able to uh, do the sunday the sunday i am sure she will not be able to do so i will do the session i i i, I i'll uh, ensure i i can do the session because i am uh, returning to sri lanka on 19th uh, so 19th i return to sri lanka uh, but uh, thankfully i will be there by uh, afternoon so i'll have 24 hours to rest uh, and then i can uh, give the uh, sunday session also and we will uh, continue to uh, kind of do our uh, sessions in wednesday classes post uh, sister came are coming uh, to india she will have the operation so we have kind of decided on that uh, so she will have the total knee replacement op operation so the both the knees uh, will be replaced and uh, she has a bridge work to do so i think that there is a, a three or four uh, toots uh, which were uh, artificial there were a bridge over there which uh, fell Uh, it was supposed to last for thirty, uh, so, sorry, fifteen years, but it lasted more than thirty years. So she <laughs> kind of had a good luck, uh, run of luck. But this time, uh, uh, the uh, the doctor, uh, one of the doctors, said that uh, they can still uh, uh, put a, another bridge over there. So I think uh, this would also last for the next thirty years. So we hope for that and. Uh, hopefully uh, she will come back uh, when she is next time we see next week on 23rd uh, hopefully we'll have sister came over here uh, to give the talk okay then uh, is there any questions any anything you want to ask about uh, the developments or anything like that no <laughs> there is uh, okay <laughs> then if there is no questions then i will share the merit and uh, we'll uh, see you uh, on sunday uh, anybody who wants to join us on sunday and then later uh, on wednesday next wednesday i hopefully uh, would uh, have uh, sister kema also come and give us because she will be there back in india we have booked the tickets and everything so it's a certainty so okay we'll share the merits may suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be may the grieving shed shall be and may all beings find relief may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness may beings inhabiting space and earth devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours May they long await the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Sadhu. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Sadhu.